It's uh, 37 years and I'll be speaking later on. It's been 37 years in a ministry working with offenders, ex-offenders, offenders on release and offenders at risk of custody. That's what I've been doing in God's will for the last 37 years, since 1972. Deborah, Mandy, I met Brian Collins in 1975, in 1975-76, and him and his wife Frank were witnessing to prostitutes in a red light they set across. Two girls gave their hearts to the Lord, I remember it, I don't know whether Brian does or not. One of them went to church and was spurned and scorned. Another one went and never went back. But one of them stayed, and she's alive and well, and still a Christian to this day. I don't remember if he knows that or no, but I certainly remember it well. And we were, Brian was told, uh, and again, he's getting old by the way, it's an age thing. <laughs> but he was also told by Strathclyde Police in the red light district of Glasgow to get off the streets. These girls are meeting a need. Absolute disgrace. That was how I met Brian Frank. All these years of working with these types of people, there's a big problem, and I, and I was sharing it with Noel earlier on there, that when, when people come out of prison, and some of you guys will be in that position, and some of you ladies will have been too, I have a philosophy, I have a thought, I have an opinion, that the first 24 months of after release are absolutely horrendous. We take so much baggage with us in there, and when we come out, and I can't speak for Brixton or any of the prisons around about here, but I know that in Glasgow, I have watched them go out at 7 in the morning and come back in at the dinner time shift. Yeah. And here today, Brian and I, a real privilege of coming down here and learning about Transformed. And it's long overdue in this country that the social workers, the psychologists, the psychiatrists and the sociologists and the government and the prison ministers got to grips and came to terms with the fact that Christ changes lives. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say to you that social work principles and the social work theology book, when it first became official and people had to be trained to counsel and talk to people, it was based on scripture. We have moved from it far away. And here I have the opportunity of, for Leicester, I've met some of the Southampton people and, and some of them, I wish, oh no, I'm not going to go down that road, um, I pray that uh, some of the people in Glasgow catch this vision. Uh, I get the shock of my life <laughs> when they said it was going on YouTube. I'll be hiding, I'll be running for cover. Uh, <laughs> but haven't been caught for everything. But that's besides the point. No, it's long overdue in all honesty that Christian, Christian ex-offenders on release at risk of re-offending came together for themselves. Frank, as the pastor, and I respect the pastoral role of that man and all the pastors that we have today. But there is nothing can touch the heart like Jesus. But there's also nothing can touch the heart like an ex-offender who knows where the heart is and knows where to meet it. Mandy and Brenda, she knew where she, she, knew where she wanted to take her. And now we have Mandy who knows where it took her and where she's going to go with it. And that's what transformed will mean for you. And hopefully in God's divine will, after these ladies and gentlemen and Frank have come to Scotland on the 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th, 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th of November, Scotland will begin to understand what transformed is all about. And I want to speak a little more about that as I speak to you about Christ in my own life. Thank you.